Welcome to EW Scene Sealers. I'm Marcus. Uh, and we are obviously with Jason Janelle talking about On My Black, the final season just aired. This is serious. You know, things can get real bad real fast. We need to talk. Do we? I, of course, want to check with you. Uh, now that the final season came out yesterday and Instagram was down, so people better have watched it because what else? Yeah. Right? There was nothing else to do. Uh, <laughs> have you already seen a big reaction? Like, what has the reaction been? Do you think everyone or, like, those diehard fans have already watched the full thing? Um, I don't know. I hope so. I hope the diehard fans were like, you know, I know it's been a long time waiting with COVID and whatnot. So I hope they, you know, dove right into it. I know the reaction has generally been, like, that everybody's kind of, content with the way on my block ended like it gave them a a super uh finalizing finale everybody yeah. got the closing chapter yeah i mean parts of it were tough but then parts yeah, of it were tough. like they were a little you know <laughs> into our like core four um but i think getting into the start of the final season because i think this was teased in the end of season three was that uh flash forward and so i wanted to know because it was kind of a change for everyone especially look wise like did you get to have uh input on how uh ruby looked two years later or what changes uh, not, no not really they like they were like ruby's gonna be punk rock after this All, and i was like um okay but i do remember we had to finish the last episode of season three the first day we started filming because like People needed haircuts and like Diego had to go bald and like, you know, we had to complete out the season and then, you know, do that first so that everybody could like, you know, get their look together afterwards. But the whole Ruby thing was I do remember being like, hey, guys, like, I don't know, I kind of want my hair to be a little shorter because I spent the whole quarantine with short hair, like I'm not trying to make. And then they're like, yeah, you can go a little shorter. And then like I did a little shorter. And they're like, stop. Don't do anything. <laughs> And they're like, not, like, like Ruby can't. He can be punk, but he can't be like a uh, skinhead. I'll, I'll take it. I'll be punk, if you want to be punk, <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit of a bait and switch too. Because then we find out that Ruby's mainly been uh, with Jasmine the entire time, and she's kind of like right. trying to find this alt for everybody to like love him. Yeah, so that, and, he uh, that kind of got into like, I guess there's pros and cons to this, but. Was it difficult at all that the final season starts with like the core four all separated, not really talking to each other? Because I don't know if you guys knew going in that it was final, but I feel like if you're coming to an end, it's hard to like be away from the people like as you're trying to conclude this. Well, I think um, it wasn't that hard because first of all, we make up in like the first two episodes. <laughs> <laughs> And we also got to be on set with with each other still, even though there was like this animosity, like mm -hmm. between characters, we still got to be on set, like with each other and have those moments. And like, we just be chilling behind the scenes, like me, Diego, Brett, uh, Jessica, all of us. It was a little, um, Sierra was the only one who was kind of like off to the side because she doesn't come in until a couple episodes. And then... Julio, it sucks because, like, I used to get so much screen time with Julio, and now I feel like they just give it to Diego. I was like, what happened? Y'all, like, ruined our, <laughs> our bond we were getting here. Ruby likes spooky, too. Right. Um, <laughs> but I think the other thing, too, uh, I had mentioned this, but in these past two seasons, we've uh, gotten to see, like, the buildup finally pay off between Ruby and Jasmine and, like, uh, get interact a lot more and sometimes are connected at the hip has that been fun sort of like uh acting with jasmine going from like oh she's like the annoying friend to like kind of like the core four plus one basically yeah. we call it the core more it was super <laughs> fun. i feel like the only like real fun fun comedic acting wise that i ever do on all my block is if i'm in a scene with brett or if i'm in a scene with jasmine with Jasmine, it, it's always like this crazy because Jessica just brings so much to the scene. And so you always want to like top her. I feel like 
comedic actors like they're like oh is that what you're doing to be funny okay let me do something to be funnier like you're trying to steal their shine like in the best way possible because you just want to like be funny yeah um, so it was just like amazing because jessica's so funny so it's like what can i do so you know we do like those sex scenes and she'd do a moan and i'd be like is that your moan okay and then like i'd try to one-up her and she'd one-up me and it'd just be the craziest things on set it would be so much fun yeah i think it would it might have been last season but um the scene where you guys are just behind the door but it's like ruby's parents trying to figure out what to do like there's so much comedy just from like listening in on what ruby and jasmine are doing right. and this season right was it <laughs> yeah that was this season that that was hilarious because uh they kept doing their coverage first so like the camera would be on them and mm -hmm. then to us and then do it so me and jessica after a while we were just there like talking to each other blah blah and then they'd be like um ruby and we'd be like and start moaning like while we're there on the door like looking at our nails like just chilling and then we're like um ah, ah, you know going crazy it was just the funniest experience ever yeah um and i think one of the reasons why i really enjoy ruby um and you playing him is that uh you mentioned uh acting with brett and jessica uh and how like there's comedic aspects of it but i think especially in this final season you get to see these really ups and downs so like if the scene's funny it can just as quick be dramatic or like you get to bring it back too has that uh been a great part of getting to play ruby is that he is both like a comedic character and a really dramatic character that's the best part of playing ruby because i feel like in one show, I got to uh, put on multiple performances. You know, I wasn't just a comedic actor. I was, I got to, as an actor, you kind of want to do a little bit of everything. You know, people always hate this thing of being like pigeonholed or, or typecasted or, or whatever. Like there, you'll hear that a lot in the actor world. And it's like, I don't want to just be known as this, or I don't want to just be known as the funny guy or like the, the dramatic actor and like being able to play Ruby, you know, season one, he was super funny until the last episode, then season two, he was really um, hurt and, and vulnerable. And I had to play on all the dramatics of being super upset. And then as the season progressed into season three, he like kind of found his footing and he became funny again. And then I think season four, it's just like him being super dramatic and funny. And I think we kind of lost most of the, the dramatics for Ruby but when it did happen it was the comedy came because it was like he was being so dramatic and so sad for like something that was so innocent or so like you know dumbfounding like what are you what are you sad about <laughs> I think too it's like uh, as the story is kind of coming to a close he has like a better sense of how to react to things and he like you really have gotten to see the growth with Ruby um <laughs> And I think yeah, there are like a lot. Ruby does get a lot of really great scenes this season. Um, but I wanted to know, like, is there a particular story arc, and it could be with Ruby or just the show in general, that you're really proud of in terms of like the stuff that makes you proud to have been on on my block? Um, I think the entire show has made me super proud. You know, the writing and and what it's brought to to the world of, of television has been this YA show, but um, everyone has seemed to fall in love with it because it's, I guess it's told this story that was just so universally loved because it was, I don't know, I think it was, um, I guess so mature, even though it was like, the, uh, I guess it was trying to speak to an audience of like, hey, if you're between this age and this age, you'll love this show, but then, other people started watching and they were like, you know, they all fell in love because it was just, everything about it was so well done. I think for Ruby, like my, my favorite story arc for Ruby is, is the whole him being traumatized by getting shot. Mm -hmm. Because he was like a, he was, he was a stereotype at the beginning, but like in the best way possible, he was like the brainiac nerd who's hormones are like raging now that he's going into high school and I got to play the comedy of that and then that happened and then I got to play the dramatics of what so many people go through especially living in, in certain places where these are their realities yeah even certain people in my own family so knowing that I got to to play 
a real character mixed with like a comedic stereotype was was my favorite part of playing Ruby. Yeah, totally. I loved that the show was able to really keep up with it and remind you that like Ruby's going to have times where he may feel triggered or something like that. Was that also something that you were conscious of while playing him? Like we got to make sure that to take into account his full experience. Yeah, I just wanted it to be um authentic. Mm -hmm. I just wanted it to be um I don't know, I wanted it to be just like however real it could be portrayed by someone who actually went through what he went through. Because I know people who actually went through that. So I was like, whatever y'all really went through, like, let me know how it went. And I would like go do my research. They tell me and then that's how Ruby came about. Yeah. Um, is there a scene either in the final season or the show as a whole that stands out as maybe the toughest or the funniest? I'm wondering what some of your favorite uh, scenes have been. Um, definitely the prom king scene. Lauren, who was the director of that episode, she was like, I was like, Lauren, I just like, I'm winning prom king. I'm just go crazy. Is that cool? She's like, oh my God, do it. Just do whatever you want to do. And so I was like, Brett, stand right here. And I was like, I'm gonna push you off the stage. And then I just started going crazy. There was like 20 different takes and like every take, take was different. Like some I was screaming for my mom. There was others where I was like running around the stage. There was others where I was like, cursing it was like i was just acting wild i think i had like a red bull that day That's the direction was go for it we're gonna try things we're gonna throw bread off stage we're gonna go everything do some crown work see what, yeah. what kind of work we can get out this crowd everybody dance <laughs> amy uh said what is your favorite aspect of ruby's character oh my favorite aspect oh what does that even mean my favorite aspect I guess, like, what's an element of Ruby you really enjoy? That he's funny, that he yeah. himself. I, that I can always come to work and have to get super hyped because Ruby's about to be on a thousand. And there's no greater puzzle than yourself. Uh, no more questions! What has being on the show uh, meant to you? It's meant everything. Oh, my God. It's meant the entire world. It's, uh, it means, like... It really means keep going for me because I, I got into this business not really knowing if I could do anything. Yeah, it just meant that like I can keep going and, and really pursue like my dreams and for, for everybody else because I got in this industry not even knowing what I was going to do or if I could even do anything, if I could even play a single character, let alone have an entire TV show. So for me, it, it's hope. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I want to give time for fan questions, but I have two quick questions. They did announce that uh, On My Block is going to have a spinoff called Free Ridge. Uh, are you down for Ruby to pop up on that at all? Has that been a conversation at all? It hasn't been a conversation. I think um, Free Ridge is going to be um, this thing where it just lives in the world of, of Free Ridge and maybe sort of has elements of On My Block, but... Um, I I met the cast and whatnot, and they're amazing and young, and I'm like, I'm so happy for a whole new group of people to get the experience that I was given. Yeah. And also, shout out to you, because Ruby's the one who gets to do, like, the knowing nod of, like, that's the new group of kids. Right, right. <laughs> I was like, Easter egg. I found it. That must be the new cast. Um, but then the other thing, too, is uh, what's next for you? Because uh, On My Block ended and people loved you on that, but people definitely want to see you and some more stuff. Uh, yeah, I just finished filming a movie. I started Boo Bitch yesterday. Um, I, I started another movie, I think, next month or something. But I think ultimately, like, what I'm really – I read this book during quarantine, and I um, sent it to my people, and I was like, I want to turn this into a project – and like going through that whole process, I really fell in love with um, the aspect of being able to find things that I want to do and that I also think like is so valuable to the world. I really think right now we're in this hole of like remakes and, and you know, um, sequels and whatnot. And I just think there's so much amazing content that that needs to be seen by the world. And like if given the opportunity, I, I want to make sure I bring things that like 
I became an actor because there were certain movies that I fell in love with so much I wanted to be in them. Yeah. But obviously I can't because they were filmed and and whatever not. So now I'm like as an actor who kind of has some sort of, you know, take on my own path like a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I definitely want to just create content that I think is fit for me. And, and fit for the world to see. Like, we need we need amazing stuff, and it exists out there. This ain't eighth grade anymore, boys. It's no timid hands off. It's all confident hands on. Mia Hernandez, what was your favorite part of the season? Um, my favorite part of the season was, uh, I think, like, the directors and producers were like, Jason, just do whatever you want to do. You know, and so that's why you get the prom scene and you get like all these crazy things because I was just acting crazy. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay. That we'll save spoilers for the end. Oh, I though I do like this. This kind of touches on it. Um. Duh. It, Jasmine said, "Why y'all do a story like that?" You know what? That's life, right? <laughs> <laughs> Was that a conversation going into the final season of like, we're going to have some, we're going to have a lot of good with this, but of course there's going to be some bad as there has been on the show. There's been tragedy uh, in between the comedy. And so I guess it's representative of the show as a whole a little bit. Yeah. Without like spoiling too much, I will say um, one of the, you know, big shockers we were told about mm -hmm. that learn and we read it in the script and I, we were all like I remember us all gasping because we were like reading the scripts together and and crying like at table reads um but I I, I sort of expected it you know season one they <laughs> character and like had people thinking about what was going to happen to a main character you know and if all my black did that season one I could only imagine what they were going to do with the final season so it wasn't yeah. really conversation but i knew i knew we should mm -hmm. all know this show from jared favorite blooper of the show um damn i'm trying to remember um <laughs> i don't remember a blooper oh gosh well i mean there's already so many jokes that made it onto the show I'm not funny blooper like if someone fell or tripped or something like that but it's really like just for the most part, people forgetting their lines. Getting <laughs> 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 to film the prom sequence. Wait, say it one more time. Were there any other funny parts of filming the prom sequence, whether it was you guys getting prepared or when you guys are finally there? Yeah, I totally forgot that my eyebrows were like painted like that. I remember FaceTiming my friend while I was on a break and she was like, yo, what the, and I was like, what? Like, and we both were scared. I'm like, what happened? And she's like, well, you tell me what happened. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, I was so worried. As soon as they said it, I was so worried. I thought he was gonna come with like eyeliner for eyebrows. At I least was... they were gonna wanna shave them. I was like, mm, no. What we all need is to recalibrate. I guess some touch ups. Ruby, your brow could use some filler. I mean, your cheek could lose its stash. What? Uh, what was it like portraying Ruby when you're with Latrell? For season four, it, um, it was more so like uh, I walked into it angry. And then I was like, by the end of this, Jason, you have to leave. Um, sorry for him. Mm -hmm. so mindset behind that. That was my only other scene with Latrell ever um, after season one. So that was that was the mindset. It was like Jason walk in angry because you ruined your life and by the end of this you need to feel more sorry for him than you do for yourself. Yeah. And that oh my gosh. It it killed me when he, he just wanted to finish that drink. Right. Yeah. Um let's see what else is in here. Uh we covered plans after on my black. Um, okay, let's go. Okay, from Kayla Hare. In terms of workshopping uh, the creation of Ruby, how much creative input did you get in that process? And I think to add to that, did that evolve as the show went on? 
Yeah, season one, no input. Um, you know, I just walked in as an actor. Um, and then as things, um, as we progressed, there, I didn't put too much input into Ruby because mm. the character was always so well written. And um, I was just more focused on the acting aspect. Uh, so I didn't really care too much. But um, there were little things where I was like, oh, I don't know if Ruby would say this or I don't know if Ruby would do this. So I really, but I really had no input on Ruby whatsoever for the most part. Like I just let them, I just trusted them so much and loved what the writers did so much that I was just like, you know, I'll just listen to whatever you say and act. And that's all I'll do for, for now. Yeah. Um, I think one particular scene that I love is that Ruby gives that final speech that's kind of, it's not the final scene of the show, but it's kind of like the conclusion of the show. Um, did you, what, how do you feel sort of uh, reading that in the script and what kind of preparation into that, went into that scene? Uh, the, um... the speech at the final party. Okay. Um... For that, it was just like a, it was like a Ruby has one last speech type of thing, mm -hmm. you know? And when I like do the Ruby speeches, I always, I like to think of it as like, you know, those like funny, embarrassing kids that like, when there's a party, they like to like dance and show everybody like their dance. And it's like embarrassing, but kind of funny and but kind mm -hmm. of cute. I'm like, why is Ruby this like young kid always like the take charge person when his dad's there, his mom's there, his uh, grandma's there, like his whole family's there and you get the like 14 year old or 15 year old to like take charge and and do everything. So I like to make Ruby like that, like, like it's serious, but I still like to make it like, oh, uh, this is kind of cringy, embarrassing. Why is the kid doing this? You know, that's how I like to take on those speeches when it comes to Ruby. Um, and I think too, did it feel in acting that scene that was it a part of like Jason saying goodbye to the show as well? Like, did it feel like that at all? No. Oh my God. It's really crazy. No one really prepares you to leave a show after all this time. Mm -hmm. There was no definitive moment where I felt like I was saying goodbye because I'm so close to my cast and, and like. I don't know. I remember rapping. And even when we rapped, it was a night shoot. It was like five in the morning. The sun was coming up. And I was like, okay, guys, I just want to go home. And then when I'm home, I was like, oh, wait, I'm not going back. Like, there was no definitive moment where I was like, last day on set or whatever. It was it, like, all just like goes past you, like flying past you without you even realizing. Yeah, like gradual. Um, I like this question that's actually in the comments. It says, were there any relationships uh, you wanted to work out or anything from an audience perspective you wanted to see or uh, see answered? And this is from Jordan Key. Um, not, you know what? I, our cast was always so small and I always like, every time we had like a new person, which was always just one or two characters on set, I was always so excited to like meet new people and like, see new actors and I always wish that like because of the like toxic relationship that Monse and Caesar had I always wish that they would have brought in another character for Monse like a new love interest a new guy to the thing um just to like open up like her point of view on what a relationship should look like yeah now yeah I guess maybe the the boarding school kind of was like the relationship that took her away <laughs> um this is okay i'll do this and then i'll ask one of the funnier ones um so this is david avalos what was the most difficult season to film for you um i think season two mm -hmm. was because i just had to be emotionally drained almost every day on set and like so angry and so mad and i was like this is hard, y'all. Yeah. You know, when you film, like, I'd be sad in this scene, but then a little funny in the next scene, but it's so hard to transition so quickly from, like, oh, my God, I'm so sad to, like, you know, happy again and funny. Yeah. Uh, and then, I mean, I kind of have to go funny. Let's see one of the ones that uh, popped up here because I want to make sure. Oh, though, some of these are really good. 
Okay, you know what? I like this one better. We'll get to it later. Uh, Lillian Rose asks, did you, I guess I'll rephrase this a little bit. How did you grow personally with Ruby? Um, I don't know. I, I, I like to think that like with Ruby personally, um, I, I chose to like do certain things with Ruby, I, it's actually like being older than the actual character. I, I didn't grow with him. I actually had to like make myself younger. I had to know stepping on set, I was playing like a 14, 15 year old. So I just remember like always doing a different voice cadence and, and just having an immature mindset and like doing immature things. So it was actually the opposite of like really growing with Ruby. I guess if you're asking in a sense of like, how did he help me grow personally? I would say like his confidence really, you know, um, like, I tried to grab onto that when I could because he's always just, like, whatever I see, I want, and I go for it without any, like, um, hurdles. I mean, not hurdles, without any, like, he sees no obstacles. Mm -hmm. Like, they're just there because that's life. But he doesn't see them. He doesn't go, like, thinking, like, oh, I can't talk to that girl because, you know, she's, like, too pretty or whatever the case may be. Like, he doesn't care. Yeah. Really, like, I try to grab that from, from Ruby and, like, just hold on to all that confidence. Yeah. Um, okay, here's the funny one. Stranger Mike, why they got to do you like that with the wig? <laughs> Listen, um... The people need to know. I will say, <laughs> you you were not at it alone. I think we could see the bald cap on Julio. <laughs> I am the actor here, and if you have hair questions, please refer to the hair department. <laughs> <laughs> you were still able to kill it in the scene. Thank you. No problem. All right, let's see if there's uh, one more good one. Um, let's see. Oh, this is interesting. I guess, okay, so this is from Kara. Uh, who do you admire the most of the series? Um, and so I think to expand on that is like, is there anything that you'll take away from the story or just from the experience of being on the show and kind of carry with you like a big, some of the big lessons that you've learned in doing this? I really admire Jasmine's character because like we knowing we know that she has these hardships of like having to take care of her father and like, you know, being in love with this guy who like disliked her so much. And like Jasmine always was just like, um, she understood that the world wasn't a place where people like her are put in the forefront, but she didn't care. And, and, it, you know, she always just chose to be happy and like, life can always just throw so many sad curveballs at you. And she was like, you know, no matter how many things come at me, I'm going to choose happiness and joy and comedy. And I think that's like the most important thing. And like a lesson that I really instill in my life before I met, before I even met Jasmine, I was always like, the people who are the funniest and the happiest, like those are the people that I want to be in a room. And then after Jasmine, you see that like, they really always say like the funniest person in the room sort of is like also the saddest or whatever the case may be. Like, that's just like one of those little sayings, but like Jasmine was sort of like a, a real portrayal of that, but yeah. she always was so happy. And I was like, and then you love Jasmine so much and her personality. And I was like, I really took that away. And I was like, I, I want to be more of that, more of just consistently happy regardless of whatever's happening in the background. That's amazing. Um, and I'd like to once again thank you uh, for being on Scene Sealers. We've sadly come to an end. Uh, I want to remind the audience that On My Block season four, final season, is now airing on Netflix. It was just uh, added yesterday. You guys got to go watch it. Don't trust anything anyone said in the comments because some people are fooling you, some people are right, and we love it all. Um, but once again, thank you, Jason much thank you <laughs>